Hi, welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna to make some weight plates. I looked online to get some metal weights and they're really, really expensive. I needed some heavier weight plates. So I wanna make some sort of 20 kilo weight plates, I think. I'm gonna, um, basically, I've got this as a mold and I've got a pipe. The pipe, I've measured so it's the right diameter to go over my bar on the barbell and um, so I'm going to make a mould and um, I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do it. But basically I measured up and made sure that I had the correct volume for what I needed. And I'll show you exactly how I worked out the volume as well. So hold on tight, ready to go for another DIY video. It took me a while to find a suitable mould. I was looking for plastic buckets but they weren't wide enough. And then I came across aluminium cake tins. They came in different sizes and I could work out the size and volume that I needed to make 25 kilo weight plates. Okay, let's see how much volume a 15 by four inch round cake tin holds. I looked online for a volume calculator of a cylinder. I wanted to make sure that the calculator is in centimeters because I need to know the final volume in kilos. And it works out that it's 19 centimeters by 10 centimeters. This looks right. The final volume in kilos is 11.3 and when I made concrete dumbbells previously to work out the final weight of the cement mortar mix it was doubled so basically the 11.3 that I need will be 22.6 or thereabouts okay now I'm going to work out exactly where the center of the mold is to do this draw two lines parallel to each other at the same length then draw two diagonal lines of the same length at the end of the parallel lines that you've just drawn. Where it crosses over in the middle is your center point. Then just to make sure it's exactly the center, measure the radius from different points. And in this case, it's exactly 19 centimeters, no matter where I measure this from, from the circumference. Okay, now to measure the tubing that I need. So I need four inches, 10 centimeters. I'll measure it and then I'll cut that outside. Okay, now to go outside in the cold. These are the items in total that are needed for this job. I've got a bag of cement, a bag of ballast, my mould, a flexible bucket, a hacksaw, a file, a flat trowel, reinforced galvanised steel rods, jubilee hose clips, silicone spray, a tape measure, a metal pole, the metal pole needs to be the right size for the barbell to go through and a spade to mix the ballast and cement and you need a little bit of water for the ballast and cement. First of all I'm going to cut the metal pole that is going to be used for the inside of the weight plate. This is for the barbell to go through. I've measured this so it's the same depth as the mould. filing off the burr and any sharp bits off the end. Let's just make sure it's all the correct length. I've put a pole across the top just to make sure that it's all level. Okay, now I'm going to use the silicone and spray the inside of the cake tin to stop the concrete from sticking. Before I mix the concrete, I'm going to use the centre bit, I'm going to strengthen it with uh, one of these Jubilee clip type things and these, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I've placed the Jubilee hose clip over the piece of pole, now I'm going to tighten this up and this will stop the pole from coming out of the set concrete. Okay, now it's time to mix the ballast and cement to make the concrete. As I've got a whole bag of cement and a bag of ballast, I'm going to use half a bag of cement and half a bag of ballast. This mix is one part cement to three parts ballast. You could get away with probably one part cement to seven parts ballast, but as I've got quite a lot of cement, I'm just going to use it all up. I've made sure that the mix is not too runny and it's quite a solid mix. Gradually moving up the garden. I don't want to get cement on my nice new patio, so I'm going to fill the mould just there. OK, 
Okay, now it's time for these galvanized rods. I'm placing the metal rods into the setting concrete just to add strength. And then fill the rest of the mold up and make sure you press it down firmly to make sure it gets in all the gaps. I'm now using a trowel just to make sure it's nice and flat. I'm going to carry this into my shed and keep it by the radiator so that it's nice and warm and dries out quicker. It's far too cold to leave this outside to set. I'll leave this to set overnight. It snowed overnight. I hope the concrete is set. It looks okay. The colour's changed as the moisture has come out of the mix. Okay, let's see if it comes out. It's still a bit damp there. And it's solid. Okay, it's come away from the sides, but you can feel it's wedged in. So it's, um, here it's come away, but because it's so vertical on the sides, it's actually wedged in. So it's just easing it out gently and slowly. Okay, what I've done is put blocks all around the rim and then got a board over the top just to tap so that it comes out. You can feel then that actually it's got wedged a bit so this bit here uh, needs to come down a bit more. Okay, I didn't really want to have to do this but I'm going to have to cut it to be able to expand it so it comes out. Just cut the top rim hopefully. Okay, I've cut all the way along there and essentially that just then peels off nicely. And I think I can still use the mould again. Okay, now I tidy this up. Try and find the, the bar hole. sand it down so it's nice and smooth and then I might paint it. I'll let it dry out a little bit more because it's still a little bit damp. Okay, let's see how much it actually does weigh. Yeah, 25 kilos. Let's see if the bar fits. Yeah! This is like I'm very smoothly. Tight fit. I'll make another mould. And then what I'll do is I'll put like a, a ratchet band around here so that it pulls it in. And then when I'm ready to take it out, just undo it and it should come out easier. The centre kept moving around before. So what I'm going to do, I've turned it upside down the mould and I'm going to drill this, put this through there so that it keeps the centre pole in exactly the right position. Okay, I'm now going to clean all this up to use it again for another mould. Okay, I've put that on there then to hold that in place, then centre. Okay, I've put a strap around here, and then I've tightened it up, and it's closed up that there, which is good. And it's all ready to make some more mix. 
I've just done this second mould exactly the same way I did the first one. It's just drying off by the radiator again. Again, I'll leave this overnight to set. Great, that's dried off nicely overnight. Let's see if this comes out any easier. It still takes a little bit of working loose, but you can hear where, where it's still stuck on the mould. So there a little bit. So I'm just tapping it. The only problem is it has caused dents here, but the next mould it might be a little bit too dimpled. And you can hear, so you can hear it's come away there, but here it's still quite solid on there. So I've just been moving it around, put it onto there. I feel it's moving a bit now. It's coming away a bit now. This time it's the centre bit. There's a centre pole that was quite tricky to come out. It's a little bit damp. Okay, that's the second one done. I'm going to use my angle grinder to get rid of these rough edges you can see here where the concrete is set over the top of the mould. So I'll grind this off. Make sure you wear your personal protective equipment when you use an angle grinder. I've got my goggles, my protective earphones and gloves on. It doesn't take too long with the grinder, it grinds down pretty quick. Okay, I've rubbed all these down now and I'm going to paint it. Just put it on my workbench and put a dust sheet underneath and I'm going to paint these with floor paint. I think it will need a couple of coats, as you can see right through it at the moment. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it's looking better already. It's as if the paint is just getting absorbed into the concrete itself. It's looking much better and it'll help to seal it so it doesn't get all dusty everywhere. Well, it's all dry now. I've got some stencils paint the numbers and figures on. So I've got these that just came in the post, sent off them, and now I'll use these to put the figures on. I'm just going to stick them together a bit so that they don't move around when I paint it on. I'm using a matte grey water soluble paint. It should be hard wearing enough. Make sure you use a thick paint for this so it doesn't leak under the stencil. I've got this special small stencil brush sponge that you can use for stencils. Put a small amount on the end of the sponge and then dab this onto the area that you want the paint to go. Avoid using too much paint on the stencil brush and just dab it on. Then take the stencil off straight away. You don't need to let this dry. It's bled a little bit underneath this one, but it's getting better each time I do it. I've washed the stencil and now it's time to do another one. I've made a mistake here, I've put the stencil on upside down. But it's easy to fix, all you do is wipe it off and then start again. Right that's done, I've done the other side as well.
bought this metal pole and it's basically a mild steel metal pole that I bought and it was so much cheaper than buying a barbell so I'm going to be using this. I also bought these collars and they're called outer shaft collars and I'll use those on the inside just to set where the weights go. I'll put them on here and then I'll tighten them up I'll measure exactly where I want them to go. I'll set these at quite a wide gap so I can do some wide stance deadlifts. These collars have just got a small grub screw in that needs tightening with an allen key. Okay, I've set this up now. Now it's time to try the weights out. got some spring collars that just go over the end here. This worked really well for me while the gyms are closed. It's so easy just to add some other weights on. Let's see if it works with bent over rows. Yeah, they work all right. So that's how you make some cheap weight plates made out of concrete. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for some more videos.